How are you guys doing? Today is Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I am going to preview the second round for this 2022 Stanley Cup round, and in order to do so, I'm going to review everything that happened in this first round, as there were initially 16 teams in this tournament, and now it's been cut down to eight, and I'm just going to take you through every single matchup that led to the four matchups that we have right now, as after this divisional final round, we will, of course, make it to the conference final round as we get closer. Closer and closer to the Stanley Cup final. And leading and going into the narratives for the Stanley Cup final, the defending back to back champs, Tampa Bay Lightning, are still alive. And I can't wait to see what they do in this upcoming game. But looking at the games going on today, um, there's going to be an intra Florida matchup as the top two, or I guess as the top seed in the Atlantic Division, the Florida Panthers are set to host the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, And looking at the other matchup that's going to be taking place in the East, in the Metropolitan Division, the one seed Carolina Hurricanes are set to host the New York Rangers. Looking at the matchups in the West, the top seed in the Central Division, the Colorado Avalanche are set to host the three seed St. Louis Blues. And then in the Pacific Division, In the Canadian series, the one seed in the Pacific Calgary Flames are set to host the two seat Edmonton Oilers. So without further ado, I'm going to look into both of these matchups and look at how we got here, starting with the defending back to back champs, Tampa Bay Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning were able to make it through their first round against the two seed in the Atlantic Division, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Um, as the Maple Leafs did hold some they did hold a lead for a good chunk of this last series. In the first match of the light, the Lightning would find themselves getting blown out, shut out at home by the Maple Leafs. They lost five to nothing. Top star in that game was Toronto's goalie Jack Campbell, as he had a perfect twenty-four save campaign. In the second matchup, the Maple Leafs would fall five to three to the Lightning, as the Lightning would see Victor Hedman, their defender, finish with a goal and three assists. After the series was tied up at one, it would be the Toronto Maple Leafs beating the Lightning 5-2 to two in Tampa as their top star was their goalie, Jack Campbell, yet again. Their left winger, Andres Palat, would finish with a goal and an assist. Game three would see the Toronto Maple Leafs fall short to the Lightning as the Lightning would win it 7-3 to three in front of their hometown fans. The Lightning would go on to score the first five goals of this game as this game would be without a doubt as their defender Victor Hedman and their left winger, left winger Brandon Hagel each had two assists. After the series was tied at two, the Maple Leafs would take a 3-2 to two series lead. They were up as they would win 4-3 to three in the third period as Austin Matthews' late game goal would help them score three goals in the third period to come from behind. As the Lightning's back were against the wall, they would go on to win game six at home. They won it 4-3 to three off of an overtime goal from Braden Point after Nikita Kucherov's power play goal would tie the game up and send it into the third period. And then immediately after that, going into game seven, they would go into Tampa Bay and or I'm sorry, they would go the Tampa Bay Lightning would go into Toronto and beat the Leafs two to one. The score was tied at one in the second period as this tie was broken by Nicholas Paul. Nicholas Paul would score both goals for the Tampa Bay Lightning to help the Lightning make it out of this matchup against Tampa Bay. And now they are ready to face off against the team who finished with the best regular season record in the Eastern Conference. Conference and in the and in the NHL for that matter, um, as this is going to be the team they have to make it through if they want to make it to the uh, if they want to make it to the Eastern Conference final. So that's what's going on with Tampa Bay. Looking at how Tampa Bay's opponents made it here, the Florida Panthers finished with the best record in the Atlantic Division and in the Eastern Conference and in the NHL this season. Looking at their first matchup, they would end up facing off against the second wildcard seed in the East, the Washington Capitals. The first matchup would see the Capitals win in Florida 4-2 to two, as the top star was Washington center Evgeny Kuznetsov um, as, the, as the Washington Capitals would score three goals in the third period to come from behind and win it. Following this matchup, the Florida Panthers would go on to win game two to even up the series, as in this matchup, they would win five to one, seeing a goal and an assist from their center, Alexander Barkov. After the series was tied at one, it would be the Capitals who took the series right back as they were as they took a six to one win. They won a six to one at home in front of their hometown fans. 
After Florida scored the first goal in game three, the Capitals would score six unanswered as the top star was their goalie, Ilya Samsonov. After the Capitals took a 2-1 series lead, the Florida Panthers would end the series by winning the last three games. In Washington, they would even up the series in game four, winning it 3-2 thanks to an overtime goal from Carter Verhage after the Caps scored the first two goals or after the after the caps would um start the scoring in this game after game four the florida panthers would end up winning game five at home their lone win at home as they would beat the capitals five to three they were trailing three to nothing as they would come back and score five unanswered starting with carter verhage's goal in the second period carter verhage was the top star of the game as he had two goals and three assists to give florida the advantage and then in game six when they had the opportunity to close it they did close it in washington they won it four to three as they would win it off of an overtime goal from carter verhage as he was the top star of the game carter verhage had a goal and an assist so now this is pro this is of course previewing the florida the Panthers to face off against the Tampa Bay Lightning from within their own state as the Panthers are the team that has the opportunity to knock off the defending back-to-back champs but they are the defending back-to-back champs for a reason and they should not be taken lightly. Um, and looking at the other matchup in the Eastern Conference that starts tomorrow, the Metropolitan Division Final will see the one-seed Carolina Hurricanes host the two-seed New York Rangers. Looking at how the New York Rangers got here, they would face off against the three-seed Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round. Um, the Penguins would take a 3-1 to one series lead. Game one went to the Penguins as they beat the Rangers in New York thanks to a third overtime goal from Evgeny Malkin. After the game one loss, the Rangers would even the series up in game two, winning it five to two at home as their biggest performer was their left winger Artemi Panarin as he had a goal and two assists. After they would even the series up at one, the Penguins would win games three and four in Pittsburgh. Um, Game three would go on to see the Pittsburgh Penguins be led by Evan Rodriguez and Jeff Carter as they each had two goals. And then game four would see the Penguins win it seven to two as it looked as though the Penguins were going to run away with it. Top star in game two is Sidney Crosby. After game four, the with the Rangers back against the wall, they would go on to win game five in Madison Square Garden. They won it five to three as Philip Chidel's power play goal would put them up in the third period after they were trailing two to nothing in the second. They thought that they were going to be eliminated. Um, but following that game five win, New York would, of course, carry that momentum into game six. Game six, they would beat the Penguins five to three yet again, this time in Pittsburgh. Their top performer was Chris Kreider as he would score two goals and their center Mika Zibanejad would finish with two goals and two assists himself. Following that game six win, the New York Rangers would go on to beat the Penguins in game seven, four to three. In this matchup, the game winning overtime goal would be scored by Artemi Panarin off of a power play to advance them past the Penguins in game seven. As of course, I imagine that Penguins player is definitely mad about picking up that penalty, but now they were able, and but As a result, the Rangers are going to be the team that is on the road. The team with home ice advantage in this series is the Carolina Hurricanes after they finish with six more points in the table than the Rangers. In their very first matchup, the Carolina Hurricanes would face off against the first wildcard seed in the East, the Boston Bruins. In this first matchup, the Hurricanes would win games one and two in Raleigh. They won their first game in overtime two to one as... Or I'm, I'm sorry, not in this matchup. In this particular matchup against the Boston Bruins, they won their first matchup at home 5-1 to one, as their goals would come from Seth Jarvis and Nito Niederreiter before Boston scored at all. Um, and their top star was Antti Ranta as he had 35 saves. Following this first win, they would go on to win game two and, and beat Boston 5-2. to two. The top star of the game was Sebastian Ajo as he had two goals and their defender Tony D'Angelo had three assists. After Carolina took a two to nothing series lead, the Bruins would even the series two to two after they won game three in Boston four to two. And then the Boston Bruins would go on to win game four 
in Boston five to two. Uh, as with following this matchup, the Her- the Carolina Hurricanes would win Game Three at home as Antti Ranta was their top star. He had thirty three saves, and their center Seth Jarvis would finish with a couple of goals himself. After Carolina took a three to two series lead, it would be the Bruins who took would even the series back up at three thanks to their five to two win um, at home. They were led by their left winger Brad Marchand. After the game was after the series was tied at six it would be the Carolina Hurricanes who beat the Bruins in game seven to advance to this next round Um, this would be going on into the third period as Carolina would be led out by their center Max Domi who had two goals and an assist to be who to have a hand in every single goal to help Carolina advance to this next round and now in this Metropolitan Division final the Carolina Hurricanes are set to host the New York Rangers I would not discount either team but that, those are the teams that are going to make up the matchups in the East. Now, looking at the teams that are going to make up the Western Divisional Final, the Western Divisional Finals. The first matchup today is going to be the Central Divisional Final, as the top seed in the Central Central Division, the Colorado Avalanche, hosts the St. Louis Blues, who come in with the third best record in that division. Looking first at how the St. Louis Blues got there with the third seed sitting four points below the Minnesota Wild. They would go on to face the Minnesota Wild in round one. In game one, they would beat the Wild in Minnesota four to nothing as their left winger David Perrone would finish with three goals and an assist. Their sa- their goalie Vila Huso would finish with 37 saves. Sorry if I butchered the name. And then St. Louis's defender Tori Krug would finish with a hat trick, a trio of assists. Um, but following that first game the wild would take the series lead after they won game two at home um, led by their left winger Kirill Kaprizov's hat trick and then Minnesota would go on to win game three in St. Louis five to one as their goalie Marc-Andre Fleury at 29 of 30 saves on the night after that game St. Louis would go on to win game three at home to even the series with a five to two win as they would see two goals from their center Jordan Cairo and their left winger David Perrone as the top star went to their goalie Jordan Bingington after they tied the series at two the Blues would go on to take the series lead after winning in Minneapolis five to two. Their right winger, Vladimir Tarasenko, would score a hat trick to ensure the Blues got there. And then following this Game 3 win, as they had a chance to eliminate the Wild, they would go on to do so at home in St. Louis in Game 6. As their goalie, Bingington, had 25 saves, Ryan O'Reilly had a goal, and David Perrone had two assists. With this win, the St. Louis Blues would be the team to advance from this series into the next round, and they would face off against the division winners, the Colorado Avalanche. Looking at how the Colorado Avalanche would make it into the second round, after finishing with the best record in the Central Division, they were slated to face off against the uh, second wild card seed, the Nashville Predators. The Colorado Avalanche were the only team in the Stanley Cup playoffs to sweep their very first opponent in the first game in in Denver, they would beat the Predators 7-2. to They were led by their center, Nat McKinnon, as Nathan McKinnon had two goals and an assist. Their right winger, Miko Rantanen, had a trio of assists himself. In Game 2, the Avalanche would end up beating the Predators 2-1. to In this matchup, they were led by Kale McCarr and Nat McKinnon, as they each would finish with a goal on the day. And then following this matchup, they would go on to win their two games in Nashville. In game three, they would win seven to three as their left winger Gabriel Landeskog had two goals and two assists as Kale McCarr had three three assists on the day. And then in game four, to close it out, the Colorado Avalanche would end up beating the Predators five to three. Um, after the score, after Nashville actually took a three to two lead, the Avalanche would score three unanswered in the third period to take the lead and eventually run away with it. Top star went to Colorado's defender Kale McCarr as he and their left winger Andre Burakowski would finish with a goal and two assists. With this win, the Avalanche are going to be the team to face off against the Blues. The Avalanche still have yet to lose in the NHL playoffs. So this will be very interesting to see how it goes. And then, of course, following that up, taking a look at what transpired and what took place in the, or what's going on in the last and final, um, 
Western Conference Divisional matchup. Starting tomorrow in the Pacific, the Calgary Flames, the number one seed, are set to host the two-seed Edmonton Oilers. Looking first at the Edmonton Oilers on the road, they would face off against the three-seed LA Kings in this first round. Um, This series would end up going to seven. In game one, they would end up losing at home to the Kings 4-3 to to off of a third period goal from Philip Denault. After their game one loss, the Edmonton Oilers would win game two or at home, beating the Kings, shutting them out 6 to nothing, led by their left winger Evander Kane's two goals and an assist. After this matchup, they would end up beating the Kings in LA 8-2 to as their left winger Evander Kane would finish with a hat trick. After they were up 2-1, to the LA Kings would even the series up in LA after shutting the Edmonton Oilers out four to nothing and then after game two the Kings would take a three to two series lead winning it winning game three five to four in Edmonton led by their as Edmonton's center Connor McDavid had a goal and two assists their center Leandre Sadel would finish with two goals and an assist but after they were trailing three to two with their backs against the wall facing elimination the Oilers would beat the Kings in game six four to two as their center Connor McDavid had a goal and two assists and once they even up the series they would take game seven home to Edmonton where they would shut the Kings out two to nothing top star of that game went to Connor McDavid as Connor McDavid had a goal and an assist Mike Smith would shut the game out as he had 29 saves and Jonathan Quick was the second star of the game as he had 39 saves on the night but those two goals he allowed would be the difference Edmonton is going to be the team that advances through and the team that Edmonton is going to be facing facing as the top seed in the Pacific, the Calgary Flames. The Calgary Flames would make it here after they finished with the best record in the division. They had seven more points than the Oilers in the regular season. In the first round, they would face off against the Dallas Stars, the team that had the first wild card seed in the in, in the West. I mean, in their first matchup, they would end up beating the Stars one to nothing as their lone goal came from um, Elias Lindholm. First star of the game went to their goalie Jacob Markstrom. Following this first match of the Dallas Stars, would even the series in Calgary, winning it two to nothing, um, as their top star was their goalie. The, the Dallas Stars would actually take a lead in the series by winning game three, four to two. Um, and in this, they would see their center, J- Joe Pavelski, score two goals in order to help them take this lead. After the Flames were trailing two to one, they would go on to win game four in Dallas, four to one, as the top star was Calgary's left winger, Johnny Gaudreau. And after they would tie the series up at two, the Flames would take a three to two series lead by winning game five in Calgary, three to one. Their center, Michael Backlund, and their left winger, Andrew Mangiapane, would each finish with a goal and an assist. With this win, Calgary would see themselves lose game six at Dallas to the Stars, as once the Stars would force game seven, the Calgary Flames would go on to beat the Stars in game seven. They won it three to two. It would come down to overtime, where Calgary advanced thanks to a goal from Johnny Gaudreau, his second of the playoffs as Calgary would be the eighth team to, they weren't the eighth team like number wise, but as of the teams that I'm mentoring, they are the eighth and final team to advance to this round. And they are most definitely set to face off against the Edmonton Oilers in this intra-Canada matchup that is set to take place tomorrow. But by the end of this round, we will be down to the conference final round and I can't wait till it gets there. I do want to thank the ESPN and NHL sites for giving me all the facts and figures I need as I navigate through it one day at a time. And with that said, I want to thank everyone once again. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with more as we navigate through the world of sports. Thanks for listening to my piece. I hope all is well, and peace out. I'll catch you with more tomorrow.